You are meant to write about what you feel. You are meant to share with us what you feel. Uh, but, but you have as a as a self discipline, you have you know ignored your feelings and forced yourself to keep marching. Hello, my friend and earthly neighbor, and welcome back to another week in the jolly month of June. Well, last week we had a polarizing full moon that most likely set your mind straight. But this week, Sensei says things get a bit more complicated as Jupiter is direct and now we add emotion to the equation. I think the end result will be razor sharp focus, but we might be a little moody getting there. From my smartphone to yours, keep streaming for your weekly Namaste Today. Welcome to Namaste Today, a spiritual way to begin your day. I'm your heartfelt host and the sensei to serious joy, Christopher Witecki. Welcome back, my friend, to Namaste. Well, we're in the season of Gemini. That means human beings are doing a lot of thinking, a lot of communicating, and a lot of thinking about thinking. And up until now, we've mostly been getting rid of our old thinking, getting rid of the old story, uh, the old traps that we fall into in our minds, circular thinking, right? And last week we had a full moon, which basically pit our emotions against our thoughts. And hopefully our feelings helped us get onto the right track of thinking. Now that we're on the right track, it's time to find razor focus. This week the sun will oppose Saturn, and this will mark really the six-month mark since we began the story we were born to live. That began in Sagittarius, just after Thanksgiving of last autumn. And since then, we've been playing out, let's say, the first chapter or the first act of that story. This week, we come 180 degrees from that, and we assess how far are we? Do we think we're on the right track or not? And asking that question about being on the right track allows us to have razor focus. So in this week's show, I'm going to do a segment called This Week. We're going to talk about the five days and what you can expect and how we're trying to think on target during that week. And then later in your tea time, I'm going to break it down for all 12 signs for how that Sun Sagittarius opposition makes you razor sharp. But first, let's take a look at today's moods and your zodiac weather. <laughs> This Zodiac weather is for Monday, June 12th to Friday, June 16th, 2017. Looking at your five-day mood cast. Well, looking at the week, the week begins sort of explosive and high energy and then ends very peaceful, quiet, and spiritual. Let's drill down. On Monday, it's sunny and futuristic as new doors may bring galactic breakthroughs. On Tuesday, it's sunny and cosmic. You wake up with this breakthrough and flush out the idea. On Wednesday, it's sunny and brilliant. Now your idea expands to even greater proportion about what you are processing. Then on Thursday, it gets sunny and rather peaceful as the Sun-Saturn opposition brings it to a razor-sharp focus. And on Friday, it's cloudy and spiritual as you check it with the higher self and God. So this week is a very slow week if you look at it, but there's a lot of deep things going on inside of us. So on our next topic this week, I'm going to talk about the week Monday through Friday and guide you through it. Taking a peek at the upcoming week, I coined this week Thinking on Target. Before I go into the week, let's review the year we've just had. It really started, I think, back in Pisces, because in Pisces, we were really being called to step it up to a new spiritual level. So we pushed our spiritual story to a higher level, and we were called to let go of a lot of the karma we were born with. Then came Aries, and we rebirthed ourselves based on this karma-free portion of ourselves, but that wasn't easy because the old part of us wanted to stick around anyways. And so we had a lot of work to let go of the past, let go of old behavior, and really set a high intention for our own character, which, by the way, took a lot of strength. 
Then came Taurus. And in Taurus, we started planting seeds of things we wanted to manifest as this new character. And in a way, there was a lot of catching up to do from all of our growth in Taurus, but I think we all did the best job we could. Then came Gemini. And in Gemini, we started looking at our thoughts. In fact, the first two weeks of Gemini were very difficult because we had to clear out the old thinking. The old thinking of the old spiritual story, the old character, the old dialogue, the old behaviors. So again, we've had a tremendous amount of clearing to do. And only last week in the full moon did we probably get clear on what's really important to think about. Now, now that we're clear, we come to this week. And this week is going to be about focusing that clarity to a razor-sharp understanding. And it boils down really to an opposition we have on Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday night to Thursday morning, between the Sun and Saturn. At that point, we will be pretty much 180 degrees from the story we were born to live. We've been working on that story for six full months. And what this represents in our Gemini thinking is, now that we're free of our past, now that we're free of our problems, there's probably a lot of thinking we haven't done because we've been so preoccupied with the other thinking. So I kind of feel like this is going to be a very slow week where we're doing a tremendous amount of processing, not because we're caught up with the old problems, because we have a whole bunch of new things to think about and process. And because we're in the step 20s this week, the master steps, that means our emotions are side by side with our thinking. So this is a very uh, moody week, really, uh, on an introverted level, where certain ideas bring you passion, and certain ideas might bring you fear. And then, so along with these ideas and these plannings comes like a lot of emotional response. So that said, let me talk you through the week and how we're going to play this out. And I think it's going to be a relatively slow week. I think most of the drama will be just inside of us, if, if at all. Uh, so that's really good news. But I still want to help you find that razor-sharp focus. On Monday, it's going to be sunny and futuristic. We actually have a two-part day this week in the United States. So due to the nature of where we are in the Earth's orbit, we wake up with one step and by afternoon and so we have a second step. And this is sometimes why summer days feel so long because you kind of go through two conscious steps in the day and you really feel like you're working a double, <laughs> okay? So we wake up feeling bright-eyed and bushy-tailed with step 21 on Monday when it starts to get fun, but very soon we move into step 22 and that will be some sort of breakthrough, some sort of mind breakthrough. Depending on where you are in your thinking, it could be a solution you're looking for, it could be finding a, a whole new direction to think, it might be you finally understanding how to see it, like a step 22 Gemini, is uh, a clarity and an understanding like you haven't had before. Sometimes it raises new questions, but most of the time it's clear. So Monday there's this uh, kind of clarity that happens, especially by the time you're going to, going to sleep. And the moon is in Capricorn, so uh, on Monday that clarity is really with us feeling about the future, feeling about controlling the future, feeling about where is our future leading. So our emotions, which are a big part of this, step 20, 21, all those twos, our emotions are very conservative as we're looking for a breakthrough or we're looking for a way out. Tuesday, you wake up feeling out, okay? Step 22 rules the day on Tuesday, and the moon moves into Aquarius, and so Aquarius is the uh, energy of step 22, and so we go all out 22 there. Things get, in fact, I say it's sunny and cosmic. We also have a grand trine in air that day. So Tuesday, things, the really ideas really begin to flow in whatever stories you're working on in a powerful way. Probably everyone is disconnected from the earth, though. You know, be careful. Watch, you know, watch the road, <laughs> okay? Uh, Wednesday, then this whole grand trine just goes into brilliance. I put sunny and brilliant is what uh, the day will be. Um, this is going to be a very powerful day with the moon in Aquarius. In fact, the sun and moon are trining, so now our hearts and emotions are taking notes. Uh, and I think because 24 rules the evening, okay, is where we're going to get, um, we're going to have this emotional breakthrough where we feel on the other side of something. Now, it's at this moment, Wednesday night to Thursday morning, that the sun will oppose Saturn. And so as you're having this emotional breakthrough, the opposition will be at step 24, which means we feel where we belong. And so I think this will be a bit of a vortex that we go through between Wednesday and Thursday. Again, probably very much inside yourself, not a lot of drama going on in the world. This is all holy shift realizations in your head, Gemini, okay? Which is good for once, right? But between Wednesday and Thursday, there's this realization uh, about 
what you're thinking and where you're born to be. And at the same time, you're thinking about your story. You're thinking about the story you are born to live. So we'll talk more about that in tea time. So I'd say Wednesday, Thursday is the strangest. Thursday, you wake up with this realization, okay, and you come to some sort of decision. And it looks like Thursday is very peaceful. So if you have to make a decision, a basic decision in your life, Thursday I wouldn't try to push it until Thursday, <laughs> just so you know. Like, that would be the very soonest you want to actually push for it. Technically, you won't be ready for a commitment or decision until Friday night, okay, uh, after you've had some time to meditate on it. But preliminary decisions start to happen on Thursday. Uh, Thursday is sunny and a peaceful day. Friday is a spiritual day. We wake up with step 25 on Friday, so it's very spiritual, very foggy, kind of June gloom if it's Southern California, right? As the sun goes away, I say that. <laughs> that was funny. Um, and in this, on, on Friday, this is the day where you're going to kind of get spiritual and you know, the universe might give you extra information on the topic on Friday because we have a yod that's pointing into Jupiter. And Jupiter is direct right now. Jupiter is the planet that's telling us what's fair, what should be in balance, how our relationship should be. So I think Jupiter weighs in his big, big, big opinion on Friday. And it's not till Friday night that we go to step 26 and you'll feel like you can decide. Now, after we go through that foggy uh, time of quasi-energy quasi where we're being pulled between Saturn and the Sun, the Moon actually goes into Pisces. So, you know, this is an Aquarius and Pisces week emotionally. Very out there, out of this world, also spacey. When it goes into Pisces um, on Thursday and Friday and then Saturday, uh, there's a lot of um, spaciness in that spiritual time where you are figuring out, is this right for my soul? Figuring out, is this really the focus I want to take? Is this really where my story is turning? And that's my sensei guess, is that in all this thinking and out of it, really we're asking ourselves, is this the story we were born to live? Is this how we want the story to go? How do we want the story to go? We are the creators of our story and we usually get stuck in reality so much that we forget we're the creators of our story. Now that we've gotten out of the reality we were stuck in, the question is, where should the story go next? <laughs> okay, And that really is a great lead-in to our tea time topic for the day. So go steep yourself some tea. Let's have our weekly tea time. <laughs> Hello, my friend, and welcome to our Tea Time. Today's Tea Time topic is Razor Sharp Focus. And as I mentioned earlier, we have an opposition this week between the Sun and Saturn. And in simple terms, you know, without having the signs or where they happen to be, when the Sun opposes Saturn, things get a little serious, no matter what sign Saturn happens to be. Saturn is the serious kind of decider of our consciousness. We make decisions with Saturn. Saturn's currently retrograde and will be through August. So we're actually redeciding, reconsidering, go back, going back on our old decisions because we're not quite sure. And the sun opposing Saturn is always classically a time where you kind of head off with the boss. You kind of can't get away with it. You can no longer deny the truth. That's one thing about Saturn. Saturn just like makes you totally exposed to the truth. You absolutely are clear. You can't plead that you didn't know. <laughs> okay, like, And you basically are forced to kind of come to a decision being faced with this truth. Now, because Saturn is in Sagittarius, I think this truth is a lot more gentle than it could be in other signs. It's going to be in Capricorn next, so I think that'll be the most extreme we feel Saturn. Saturn in Sagittarius is really us feeling very serious about our story. That's what Sagittarius is, our own collective consciousness. Sagittarius makes up the Akashic record, in my opinion. It makes up all of... It records basically everything that every human being uh, actually experiences and does. And it also records how all of those things are tied. And of course, we have the freedom to create our own destiny, our own legacy, create our own story. And what happens is, is we actually end up getting caught up in our own stories that we have created. <laughs> all right. So going back to uh, sep going back to November of last year, 2016, right after uh, President Bush was elected. Remember that? Excuse me, President Trump. <laughs> There's a little Freudian there. President Trump was elected. Right after he was elected, we went into, you know, someone in Sagittarius, and suddenly I said, the story we were born to live 
began. It got fired up, okay? That story began. And believe it or not, that was the beginning of the story. So no matter how bad it has been since last November, that's how our story begins. What's really been happening is, is the universe has been uh, gently leading us off of our old stories, okay, the old stories we told ourselves, how we'd end up, who we'd end up with, all these sorts of things that we had told ourselves during the first legacy of Saturn to Sagittarius from Saturn to Sagittarius, which would have been uh, sometime in the mid-80s until now. So we had to erase that. And a lot of the last six months was us getting rid of certain storylines that really don't belong in the story we were born to live. So it's really been all of the, um, the first chapter of the book, the boring part, the setup, the background, right? And the understanding and clarity of our karma. Now that the sun has come directly opposed to Saturn, okay, it's 180 degrees from the point that we launched off this story that we were born to live. Now we're ready to move on to the next chapter of the story, I believe. And this is where free will absolutely plays in, okay? And what I want to express to you today is you're likely this week going to probably see a lot of the cycles and circles of your stories come full circle. You're going to suddenly see the arc of how you've grown in the last six months. You're going to see where this could go. You're going to remember where this went the last time. Okay, But I want to encourage you that I think most likely where it's going next will not be like it has before. That's just what all the planets show me. You can choose what you've done before, but in my opinion, you're repeating the grade. There's no need to do that if you want to move on to the adventure. So we're going to find some razor-sharp focus on what we think our story should be next. And that's because in the sun in Gemini, we are analyzing this from way across from Saturn. And we are putting all the pieces together and looking at all the evidence in Gemini. And it's the 20 degrees of Gemini, so we're looking at this evidence from the perspective of where we're going to go next, what we want to create next, not from anywhere of where we've been. And I believe that over this Wednesday, Thursday mark, you're going to come to some realization of where you feel you belong. Okay. Now that's because the step number of the opposition is 24. 24 is what you feel, uh, where you belong, 4 equals 6, which you can open up to. All right, so where you feel you belong is where you can open up. And that's one of the clues I want to leave you with is whatever you find yourself in decision mode about. You know, I'm talking about the story we were born to live, but in human terms, this may be a decision about sending a kid to school or moving your house or changing a relationship or, you know, it could play out in very human, human, human terms for you, okay, which is how God does it. I'm just the astrologer that says, this is bigger than what it appears, <laughs> okay? This is a big part of your story. This human decision you make will end up being part of your legacy and the story you were born to live, all right? But the clue I want to leave you with is the 2 plus 4 makes 6 clue. If you feel you belong, 2 and 4, to this solution or this church or this or that or that, if you feel you belong, then you should have no problem 6 opening up to it. It should just be so easy. There's no resistance. Another way, another way to put this is the right answer has zero resistance inside of you. Nothing in you doubts or worries when you find the right solution. That's what the magic of step 24 is. And that's what this razor sharp focus is from the universe is to get your mind around exactly where you feel like you belong and where you feel like you can open up to without resistance. Some people choose the resistance, <laughs> okay? And that's their right. They want to go play on the monkey bars and, uh, you know, of course you could fall off and get hurt, but there's always those kids at recess that do the crazy things, right? So with that said, I want to give each of the 12 signs a little guidance on what this is for this opposition uh, to help you make your uh, very quiet inner decision this week. Starting with the Aries, of course. And this is really tea, and I need it because I talk a long time. Aries, the purebreds of the human beings, they are literally having an opposition between an attitude and a way of thinking and what they believe their story is, okay? So this for you really is a change of your life purpose. It's your thoughts versus what brings you meaning. In simple terms, this may be you thinking about a trip, thinking about education, thinking about um, what you want to do with your whole life, all these big, big questions. And the answer is what feels right, what you feel like you belong to, what you can open up without any problem. Okay, So you will likely turn from this 
and have a new decision about what your life purpose is uh, and a new direction of thinking. And that's one thing I want to say with everyone. Once this little opposition happens, each side will have a new. Saturn will have a new decision about what your story is. The Sun and Gemini will have a new direction to think about as a result. Tauruses, you're thinking about your values and you're redeciding what you can trust and what you can open up to. So for Taurus, it's a matter of where do you feel you belong in your value? That's the real question. Where do you feel you belong in your value? And if that's the case, what decisions do you have to make about transforming your life and what walls do you have to put up and what walls do you not have to put up, right? Also with Aries, what do you what feels the best to think about? I mean, the sun is really what we're working on. Saturn is just a rock in the sky. So for Taurus, it's a it's thinking differently on the value you need to think on and then what are the uh, boundaries you need to change. Gemini, it's behaving differently. So Geminis are deciding that they want to be somebody totally new. This is their birthday period. So this is like, you thought you were this person, but maybe you're this person. Does this feel right? Can you open up to this without resistance? If that's the case, then Saturn says your relationships will have to change. Your relationships to your boss, your relationships to your boyfriend or girlfriend, your relationships to everyone will have to change. That story will have to change if you feel comfortable opening up to this new character. Cancers. Cancers are being called to open up to a higher faith, all right? And cancers are warriors, so this is a big deal. Not warriors, they are warriors, but warriors, <laughs> okay? Like, so cancers are being called to open up to a higher faith, and if you do come up to this higher faith that feels right, that you can open up to without resistance, then that means you're going to make some new decisions about your daily life your work, your work environment, who you live with, that sort of thing. So there'll be new decisions as a result of stepping it up with faith. The Leos, you're going to step it up now with a higher place in society. You have to make sure that this feels right, that you feel you belong on this level of society and that you can open up to without any question. If you do open up to this level of society easily, Leo, then there's new decisions to make about what your heart really wants, about what love really is, about what your dreams are. So your love and dreams may not be what you thought they were if you're going to open up to this level in society. Virgos, you are opening up to a new career path or a new legacy in your life. So it's like you might have thought you'd always scrub floors, but maybe you're going to actually be the one that runs the department of floor scrubbers. <laughs> okay, like So you are thinking yourself on a higher level. And if that's the case, then Saturn says you need to make some decisions about how you treat yourself, how you feel every day, and how well you're emotionally supported if you're going to be taking up a promotion at work. You need more support, basically. Libras, you are taking it up in belief. So Libras are changing adventures right now. They're thinking about taking their story up a notch, uh, going on a new path. Like Libras may just disappear from some people's lives because they're really contemplating changing the story, literally. And if that happens, then you're going to have to change a lot of plans. All right, You've been doing a lot of planning, thinking that everything is going to go down this certain way, but you may end up digging all that up, looking very wishy-washy Libra, <laughs> okay, because you decided to take it to a higher level. I say take it to the higher level. It's more fun. Scorpios. You're now considering taking your trust in yourself to a higher level. That means you're going to be willing to transform something very powerful inside yourself by trusting yourself on a certain level. You may be deciding that you're ready to take a big risk to gamble on yourself or to gamble on your talent. And when that happens, then your money plans, manifestation, what you value is going to have to change. You're going to make decisions, uh, different changes in your business plans if you're going to actually trust yourself on this new level. All for the positive. So Sagittarius is, you are reconsidering where you stand in relationships. Sagittarius have often been the givers. They give way too much until they're bankrupt and fall down, right? Well, you're now deciding to be on a new level in relationships. And when you make that decision to be a new level in relationships with the sun, then Saturn says, who you are as a character is going to be defined. You're going to make new decisions about what behavior you get involved in. You're going to basically be changing your ego if you're going to change those relationships. Capricorns, you're up in the ante in the quality of your daily life or your health. And if that happens, you have no choice but to change your decisions about how much faith you have in life or not. All right, so you'll be having to redecide whether or not God is with you, okay, if you decide to upgrade your daily life. That's basically how that's going to go. Aquarius, 
you are working on upgrading your personal love and personal dreams. Okay, Aquarius says they're actually thinking about going into the love business for the first time in 18 years. Do the North Node. So you're thinking about raising the stake of joy, raising the stake of what you go for when it comes to passion. And if that happens, you're going to have to make some changes about your social calling, your business card, and who you deal with in society. So you'll, that will be the consequence of that story change. And then lastly, the Pisces. Thanks for sticking with us, Pisces, till the end. You are going to be up in the ante with your emotional treatment of yourself. That's what needs to happen now. You need to treat yourself on a higher level, treat yourself holy. And if you're going to treat yourself on a higher level and be more holy with yourself, that means that you're going to make new decisions about your career and your legacy. If you treat yourself good, career will have to go in a different direction. But again, for all these people that have to make changes, I believe Saturn and the universe will be there for you with this change. It's a matter of deciding what you feel you belong to and what you feel you can open up to with no resistance. So good luck in the razor sharpening of your soul story. All right, my friends, thank you so much for logging in. It's such a pleasure to be of soul service. I want to remind you I have a fabulous hour-by-hour -hour astrology app called Serious Joy. Come on down to SeriousJoy.com, watch a video about it. I'm very excited it's going wide right now. And tell me what you think. You can actually try it out for the first month for $3.99. And if you want to rub elbows with other light workers on the net, we do have a club on Facebook. Come on down to NamasteToday.club and just ask to join. We have moderators approving all through the day. All right, friend. Well, I hope you have a fabulous week of razor sharpening your intellect. Until then, while you're out there, remember I love you and to live, love, be.